This video contains subject matter that may be offensive and disturbing to some people. If you are the type to require a warning throughout a video or show, let this message serve as your warning. This channel discusses the harsh reality of true crime. If this warning is not sufficient for you, consider a different genre and unsubscribe from my channel immediately. I am so low on the screen. Maybe right there, maybe right there. A little brighter in here today. Yeah. All right, crazy times. Absolutely crazy out there. Yeah, I, I think you know, in the thumbnail, there's an image going around of the, and I, I use it as the, uh, I mean, there's an image going around that was claimed to be from the crime scene, and I put it up there as a thumbnail because I think it, uh, I mean, it's so out there now that it doesn't, you know, <laughs> it's just is there. I think that is her Nike shoe in that image, Libby's Nike shoe. Yeah. Yeah, well, there's definitely, <laughs> there's things out there. So, for example, you know, there's, like I told you before, there are two images of the crime scene out there of Abby and Libby, right? Now, I'm not going to, you know, I won't show the pictures, uh, obviously. I mean, that's ludicrous um, to show those pictures on the show, but... Um, I think it's absolutely okay to describe what you're seeing and you know there's people that don't think that uh well you can't even do that man you know it's like come on <laughs> you know i'm not showing the evidence that was leaked out there it's all over the place now um uh, i think people have been pretty good about not putting it in a public forum but i think at some point it's almost inevitable when you have an image unless they're i don't know how you would stop it but Anyways, uh, regardless, um, you know, if you guys, let's see, what is it? Hey, thanks, Brown Eye Girl 714. I think we'll just put that up on the screen there and you can see it. Right, so, I'm not even sure how to, I was going to describe it. The image for I've seen it now. I've seen the actual images, all right. And um, you know, so I'm going to describe to you. And there's some interesting things in there that are different than like uh, that we've known since the beginning. <laughs> you know, for example, you know, in the image. Okay, type in what you guys think. What type of pants did Abby have on that day? Okay, or not Abby, excuse me, Libby. What were the type, what type of pants did Libby have on that day? In fact, we've all known. Right, Tracy answered for Abby. Yeah, yeah, jogger swept me out. Okay, so here's the thing. No, you, you didn't know that, by the way. Okay. So everybody's typing in blue jeans for Abby. All right. I, I, I messed up the question, but everybody was so quick to type it in that they wouldn't listen for the correction of the... So I'm going to do it again. What type of pants have we all known that Libby was wearing that day with her tie-dye shirt? That's what I'm asking. Right. 
Well, it, she wasn't, okay? <laughs> That's the thing, everybody. The whole time, we've thought she was wearing sweatpants because apparently she had them on earlier in the day, but she did not. So there's a picture with Abby where she has, and thank you to ZCS, there's a picture with Abby where she has jeans on. So I immediately said, well, shit, that, those are hers because she has, um, you know, she was the one wearing jeans. But it turns out that Libby was wearing jeans too. And it's factual that Libby had on, or Abby had on Libby's sweatpants. All right, just like the document said, the 136-page document. So the other night when I said that is because we've all known that Libby was wearing sweatpants and Abby was wearing jeans, right? But uh, turns out that Libby and Abby both were wearing jeans. Okay, so that's a new sort of like, oh, wow. I mean, it's different than what we've all known, right? So in the image of Abby, she is wearing Libby's jeans. Uh, they, they aren't tight on her legs and where the button is, you can, if you look carefully, you can see it kind of is wider there at the waist. All right, so that's interesting. And then, now you have to assume, because she is wearing her, uh, Abby does have her high top shoes on, all right? So she has those same, like, um, you know, those old, black and white basketball shoes, whatever you call them. But at that point, you then you have to realize that they were taken off the shoes and put back on later, which I didn't think I was thinking the other day. It doesn't make it any, it just makes it more, you know, more time involved. Yeah, those Converse high tops, right. So, uh, let me see. So that means that somebody would have had to take her shoes off and her tight pants, that jeans that she had, and then later put on um, Libby's pants and then put the shoes back on. That's pretty crazy, right? Yeah, I was gonna. I thought I was. I was gonna call them Chuck Parcel or Purcells or whatever they were called. So that is kind of creepy now. You know, when I was looking at it the other day, it looked like everything was correct uh, because she was wearing jeans. But it turns out that the sweatpants uh, thing, the, that concept is no longer a reality. You know, Chuck Taylor, is that what it was? Okay. <laughs> I don't know why I was thinking Parcel. What was the Parcel one? Or is that a person that I'm just... Forget it. I'm not a shoe expert, Okay. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, you would think that there'd be something on those shoes and the pants, some sort of DNA. Yeah, so basically, um, I'll just try to describe the, the scene a little bit. Yeah, so it's like... Um, hard to see uh, well so it's like <clears throat> Abby's laying on her back I mean it's it's got it's almost exactly what they said in these um, in that document she's laying on her back and her hands are kind of like like this up like this you know kind of like this and looks like uh, her hands are inside of her sweatshirt where she's grabbing onto the end like, you know uh, how women do that a lot when they're cold, they have pull their hands inside their sweatshirt and then kind of roll up in there. And then you have, um, yes, I said that, Zozo. Jesus. <laughs> okay. Every time. Uh, anyway, so then there's um, jeans. She has jeans on. The shirt's just sort of pulled up slightly. The jeans are undone. There are, she's wearing a Delphi swimming shirt. This is on Abby, the Delphi swim team one. And you can see a little bit of the 
maroon shirt that she wears in the when she's on in the bridge shot at 207 and then her right leg is underneath the left leg she's wearing both shoes you can't see any blood or anything like that there's a larger stick that goes over her left elbow and then one that goes underneath her chin and then you know for me it looks like somebody was building up like a like a lean-to or something you know sort of a on one side make it higher and then you can lay sticks across so you know that there's a, a youtuber out there uh, just a ridiculous guy he, he, he plays music and, and stuff I don't even want to say his name but he, he's he's horrible all right so he's out there he says that uh, that there's no way that one person could have done this there's no way unless they could levitate or something I mean what an idiot I mean what do you mean levitate what, what are you talking about all right and then then the picture of Libby, you know, she's nude, but they blacked out, uh, you know, the privates. And she's laying there, and her left arm's kind of reaching up. And there is a uh, very, like, an 8-inch wide branch that kind of goes over her left shoulder. And then a, a branch that goes underneath, uh, covering her neck area. And there's a little bit of blood there and a little bit on her face. And then a uh, little blood in her right uh, hand you know so it's basically exactly what was said in the in the document but it's it's absolutely when you see it it doesn't and what you can't see it doesn't look like you can see any drag marks or anything like that right around there but Libby's left arm is up so I'm kind of thinking that she was pulled into that position and then maybe adjusted and we, you know, since the images are really kind of narrow, you don't see if there was some track marks being pulled from in another direction, right? No, Tracy, Jesus. Yeah. I don't know who blacked it out, but I mean, it's just, uh, I'm, I don't, you know, the family shouldn't see those things, but they're not the most ridiculous crime scene images you've ever seen. You're, they're just kind of, um, you know, it's disturbing to see because these are the kids you've been talking about for years, but, you know, at the same time, it's exactly what was described in that document. So the, the thing that's not right, though, is there's no... Uh, anything resembling antlers or anything like that uh, definitely obviously they, it was man-made uh, this idiot youtubers out there going wow people said it was I, a very few people said that there were branches falling off of trees landing in, in that position almost nobody said that okay uh, I think most people think that maybe they put branch uh, whoever it was put branches on there and was trying to maybe build something up. Maybe then they were going to cover it with leaves or something like that. Right. And I think there's something uh, next week. Something is going to be happening in regards to this case. Um, in terms of maybe perhaps, you know, who knows? Maybe people getting in trouble for the leaking of all this crap that's out there you know I'm just here to put the rational view of the same information that people want to turn into sensationalistic garbage all right there it is not there's no Odin design there it's nothing like that and uh, Abby also has a larger branch over her left shoulder and that allows for you to sort of set at an angle of the sticks but I think what probably happened was is right during that time everything was done you know this is near let's just say it was like 3 30 ish or so now 345 and then you could hear uh, voices on the bridge because the wind was blowing from the bridge to the crime scene that day and that's about when Cheyenne and people were coming and they probably just went oh I then just got the hell out of there in a hurry mm-hmm 
And so it, when somebody says, wow, there's no way one, uh, you're a lunatic if you don't think one person, it, it, there could have been somebody else there. But if you don't think a one person could do this in an hour and some odd minutes, then you're a lunatic. And that's just the truth. You, you can sit there and pretend all you want because it fits your story a little bit better. But the reality is, is one individual can do this. And I think you know, likely law enforcement probably thinks the same thing. That's one person. And that's it. And you know, the, 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 the craziest thing of all, I mean, I, I was just kind of giving you a little description there, but I heard from a, you know, a source that I trust that, listen to this, this is crazy, everybody, that they can't find any connection between Keegan Klein and Richard Allen, even with the crazy, like five different things that seem absolutely, they can't find anything. Uh, get rid of this Elias idiot. Man, they're so stupid. Duh, because I didn't hear any of the things that just get out of here. Yeah. I mean, see, people that say, oh, duh, I, I believe that, are the idiots that didn't know all of the incredible connections that there were and timing and coincidences right so here, here's the thing everybody remember what at the very beginning when i said i think this is a serial killer like person who was there hunting that day and i said that for three years actually yeah three years three and a half until they came up with the keegan klein news right and then i was called C. Gray, you were wrong. It was social media the whole time, Gray, you bastard. And now we're back to the original story. But I just go where the information is. See, that, that's where I'm different. I collate information, put it together, and move with what people are talking about. Like uh, what, what the new information is, right? Like uh, what, when I say talking about, I mean like law enforcement's bringing up stuff. You know, you get new information. So the Keegan Klein stuff, and then you also had people like Murder Sheet who were basically um, insinuating that, you know, the Kleins and, you know, everybody, they, they were involved in some way that law enforcement was really focused in on them. And maybe they, they were at that time. Maybe they were. But anyways, you guys, uh, you know, like I like I always say on this show, uh, my show is it, it is monetized by a channel, and the only income is you guys right here. So if you guys would like to help support the channel, we started off with a couple there, but since then, <laughs> so yes, if you'd like to help support the Great Hughes Investigates YouTube channel, where at the end of the month we donate large tr chunks of money to various charities out there including our own DNA fund where we fund we currently are funding and have funded 14 Jane and John Doe cases out there with um, we just picked up a newer a new one the 14th one was a some human flesh inside of a, a sewer they just didn't you know there's nothing to identify the person other than the flesh that was in there so at least we'll be able to you know give somebody their name back and then also we have a new scholarship fund for freaks out there that pass away. So if you're able to and you're out there and you feel like you can support the channel, that'd be great. If not, then, you know, if you can't afford it, I don't want it you sending in a nickel, all right? That's the, that's the reality of it. Thanks, Circa then. Yeah, see, if you're not getting notifications, you may not be subscribed. Yeah, so it's really strange now. Now that it's verified at the crime scene that she is wearing Libby's jeans uh, in the water. So a couple other things I wanted to bring up. Hey, thanks, Danielle and Joel Sane. I think tonight, though, I might come back on and do another one. I try to do another call-in show with uh, 
Try to get some people from Israel to call in. That'd be pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So, you guys remember before where uh, somebody had found Libby's shoe during the search and said, Hey, there's a shoe here. And it was always believed that, that the shoe was found on the opposite side of the creek that they were found on, you know, kind of down there. But it turns out that the person who said, hey, we found a shoe, obviously, was looking at the shoe in the water, the photograph of just like the thumbnail, because we now know that the other shoe that Libby was wearing was underneath Abby and the phone was underneath uh, the shoe, right? So that was in that document. So you see how that's, uh, you know, that's another interesting, different thing now. There is no sort of shoe. I mean, it doesn't change much, but the shoe itself wasn't found on the other side of the creek. It was found in the water. Yeah, I think the, those images that have been out there, like this one, like this is the one. Here, I'll just move it over here and switch screen. Thanks, Mary Nolson. Welcome. Kim Possible 11. Yeah, so also um, what helps the in the channel's income out, which uh, is what I use at the end of the month, is uh, channel memberships, ad revenue, and Super Chats. No, I'm not going to apologize to Tony Klein. I think Tony Klein is a, is a scumbag. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah. Hell no. Not a chance in hell, Sierra. You kidding me? Uh, the murder sheet might, because they're the ones that sort of propagated the information. Um, I think, uh, you know, when you have somebody that bashes a kid's head into the toilet, no, why would I be worried? Uh, why would I be worried about that, Sierra? Yeah, he, he could try, but uh, he would lose, you know. There's no monetary damage to, on his part, nor, and every single thing that I've said is has been put out there by law enforcement and, uh, you know, the, those documents and the Murder Sheet podcast. So he, he can try to do whatever the hell he wants to do. Hey, thanks, Miss Fancy. No, I've never said that. Maybe once a long time ago I might have said, he looks more like he could be the bridge guy. And remember when Tony Klein's own kids said that, uh, they, well, it looks like Tony, but the voice is like, um, Keegan, you remember that shit? <laughs> oh, hey, how about will, will Ron Logan's estate sue the people that thought that Ron Logan? I just said, uh, if I ever said it, it would be, I think he looks like he could be him. There's a big difference, you know. It's people like you, Sierra, that make uh, social media a shitty place. Just try to figure things out. Hey, thanks, Miss Fancy. I'm pretty new here, but I believe in what you, you're doing and would like to help support the cause. Hugs to you and the freaks. Well, wow, that's so cool. Very, very cool. I appreciate your uh, support there. Yeah, so what if this picture was up there? Sierra, who cares? <laughs> you, know, you know, I mean, he was, a, he was on multiple articles out there. They was all over the place. I might have to remove you. Sorry, guy. I don't know if you're, when you, your name is Sierra, but your face, has, you have a beard. Not really sure what's going on there. So I'm going to have to let you go. See you later. You're a distraction. What really happened with all the gag orders, etc.? Now that we know that Keegan is not involved, I know. So what, now it's they haven't found any connection, right? At this point, but there's still the whole thing about where you know the language was different. On I mean, I don't know, man. <laughs> you know, if these people, when people do these kind of things, you would think the FBI would be able to figure out if somebody actually communicated or not. I don't know, but uh, it. Aren't you guys struggling with that a little bit, though? Wow, it's KK. I haven't seen you in like a month. 
Hey, brutally honest. Gray, do I understand correctly that you saw the real crime scene pics? No, I saw them. I saw them. Yeah. I've seen them. Um, and, you know, so the thing is, is it's true that apparently that Abby was wearing Libby's jeans. And Libby was wearing jeans, not sweatpants, like we all thought. You remember how we all thought that there were sweatpants, but they were actually jeans? And she was wearing those, and then she was also wearing her shoes, but that would mean that the shoes would have had to have been taken off to get those tight, the tighter jeans that she wears off. And then you would put Libby's jeans on, so you sort of wonder, like, okay, so what was happening there? I mean, was Abby maybe still alive and cold, so then the person put... You know, I, I don't really know what the hell happened. I mean, it's just crazy. Thanks, Tamara's favorites. But you you have these people out there that claim shit. Okay, so what, what is this one? Let me read some of this. This is what the uh, idiot YouTuber was saying. It says, as it could have been a person that did, did it, could have been, uh, it could have been one person, provided that person was either a superhuman or had levitation powers, which I guess would still be superhuman, Right, but I meant superhuman strength. You need to understand what I saw, and if there's anybody else in the chat who saw what I saw, they will verify this. This the only uh, blood anywhere at the scene was on Libby's hands and a little bit on her face. Well, it was a little bit more. There was some down. Yeah, if there was blood anywhere else, they were both very, very. Uh, yeah, he goes into some. Also, there's a chance that they were trying to hide the bodies with these sticks. Uh, um, there's also no chance that they were trying to hide the bodies with these sticks. No, not at all. No chance. Whatever. Um, if they had wanted to hide them, it would have been much easier to just kick leaves over them because there are plenty of leaves in the area. See, when you say there's no chance, that's just a lie to people, right? You're just lying. And maybe they thought if they moved the leaves, it would disturb a lot of the, you know, the ground right around there. You know, who knows? But, uh, yeah, I mean, sure, you could cover them with leaves, but you could also try to build, like, a little structure and then put leaves on it, and it would sort of blend in more naturally instead of just having flat ground and, you know. Yeah, but I mean, it's weird to do so. They accidentally, I don't know if, I don't think so. Because Abby, Libby didn't have any clothes on. So they, they wouldn't have grabbed each other's anything. It's pretty weird, though. But it, does, it does change things a little bit. I mean, it matches what that was said in the document that was released. So what I'm explaining to you now is literally the same sort of thing, except there is no Odinism anything there, okay? It's, <laughs> it is pure insanity um, for them to be saying that. Also, it is true, apparently. So there's another thing that's true. That remember the, when Barbara McDonald said that the, th this, is, this is an actual image right here apparently from the crime scene right here right there all right so that is an image and so that might very well be the quote f that people are talking about but you don't really see anything right here right i mean you see something there there but our eye puts something here right see this little spot right there is the same color here i'll explain this to this hold on a second Yeah, so if you look over here, see right there? That's exactly the same color as that. That's the same color as that. So in reality, 
there isn't this line there but just because it happens to be a little darker there which is the same as that and you know, right in here and right there your eye goes oh look it continues on but it doesn't do that you know, so what you have right here is a, a something there here here there 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 and it's just kind of like a little blotchy you know it doesn't look like an F to me at all you see that I mean people want it to be an F so it is one there isn't one there there's no continuation of anything you know maybe they did some other type of test on there ah oh, Jesus can you zoom in yeah, I've been zooming in. I'll zoom in if I want to. I just showed you what this right here is the same ex as, as this and this. And if you can see, that's where some blood is. And there's some blood right there. And I mean, maybe I could do something where if I, let's see. Take that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it could have been. I mean, we don't know exactly what tree, um, you know, it sounded like the tree with the F on it was the same tree that maybe they were killed at I don't know if it was the same one I don't know what an Odin Watt is Yeah, see this didn't get any lighter and it looks just like that. So the reality is mm -hmm. if we were just gonna, you know, I don't have the original photograph, but right there there's obviously something that, you know, it looks like it kind of went like that. But this doesn't continue on there. So if you're gonna put like a, a layer on the top there and maybe draw, let's see. stuff in there around like that something there there here 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 and right there boy what a great F that is everybody <laughs> boy that's uh, that's amazing maybe a little stuff right there <laughs> yeah doesn't look like an F to me you know, people want there to be this bridge over here, but there just isn't one, so. Yeah, let me, let me try it again. I'm going to do like more.
Hey, thanks, Alley79. Yeah, it doesn't look like one. I could see how people might just immediately go, oh, look, it's an F. And maybe they did some luminol on it at night and you could see something different, but I don't know. I'm just kind of drawing the outlines here. Well, there you go, man. It's like an F to me, huh? <laughs> yeah. Now, it turns out that this spot here is blood, but it looks just like that. So why isn't that blood? You know? Like, why isn't this blood here and this whole thing blood if that's blood? I think that is absolutely, you know, those are kind of the shapes right there. There you go. Because uh, I was told that by somebody who knows. Uh, twice I've been told that. Recently. You know, that uh, they haven't been able to find any connection. Which is just mind-boggling. <laughs> you know, to me it's mind-boggling. You've got a guy, uh, apparently, you know, she's communi uh, Libby's communicating with the Anthony Schatz profile. And um, supposed to meet him out at the bridge. And the only reason that the Anthony Schatz profile wasn't able to meet the girls, is because, or Libby anyway, was because there was some random killer sitting around out there. And also, right during the search of the Wabash, I mean, I, I, we've gone through all these. It's, there's so many crazy coincidences that um, it's almost too many to list. You could sit there for an hour. Yeah, but that, that wasn't, none of, almost none of the stuff that I'm saying has anything to do with them. You know, the Marathon gas station was something they put out. So that adds to the theory, you know. Nothing looks like a fingerprint. So I think they had plenty of time to cover their tracks. What do you mean they? Who's they? There's only one person. Richard Allen. So here, here's the thing, everybody. Richard Allen is the killer. Right? He is the guy. Uh, it's just how did how did Anthony Schatz and them not be part of how he got there that day? Remember, he was like on a mission when he was walking by the girls. Like he knew. I mean, is there a way that maybe he intercepted? I mean, here I don't know, man. God, how did he? It he could be. So there's a there's a the counter piece of information that made kind of always made me pause slightly was the the timing and how there was not a soul around. How could that have been planned? And that would make it seem more random that he went there and and I brought that up multiple times on here. 
that it was random because there was not another soul there. How would he have known that? He couldn't make it so that other people weren't showing up there. It's like he was waiting and waiting and waiting. And maybe the girl that saw him standing on platform one would have... Uh, maybe she would have been a victim had she gone across that bridge. You know? So it does sort of change things a little bit. I mean, definitely changes the whole overall theory. You know? I said, they said that there's no connection. And I've twice I've heard it from people that would know the answer to that question. Two different people. So. Maybe they just told me to, you know, so I didn't have, the, <laughs> I don't know. That's one of those weird ones, though, man. That makes it even more crazy than the... Um, The uh, member in uh, Utah, <coughs> in Utah. No, Cindy. No. Let's see. Well, suddenly Richard Allen. I mean, Richard Allen. Um, it lets us all know that that's him in the image. I don't know if he never Googled the. I mean, that's the thing. Um, if that's a true piece of information that Keegan Klein Googled the Marathon gas station that day, isn't that the craziest coincidence ever? Unless he was literally thinking, hey, I'm gonna, I might go out and meet the girls. I meet Libby, right? So he's going to go out there and meet Libby. Uh, I wasn't sure, you know, he wanted to. Figure out what the gas station was in town. I, I don't know. But, uh, you know, if he was going to go meet her as Anthony Schatz, so that would mean that the story is true that he only didn't get to meet her is because some other killer was there. Isn't that weird? Right, Cindy, right. You're just, oh, you're just so on top of it, Cindy. You just, wow, you're just whew, amazing. Yes, as well, if he was trying to groom Libby as well, it seems statistically, I know, it's insane. Like anybody with a brain, if you don't see how incredibly low odds there are that they weren't connected, and somehow, apparently they're not. Sometimes, yeah, but this is this is more than just coincidences. This is like five of them. Uh, they're searching. They take Kagan Klein out of his jail and bring him to a facility and start searching the Wabash River. On the September twenty-first, they get they get the name of the Richard Allen individual, and they still search that water for another week. <laughs> Which that's sort of an anti. Well, I'm not sure what they would be still looking in that water for. The item, I guess. Hey, thanks, Just Junie. Uh, what do you mean? What are the? What are the? What do you mean? Where do the puppies fit into this? Oh, you mean the ones that were in the jacket, uh, along with the oxygen tank and everything else. See, I don't know if it's 100. Well, it sounds like they were communicating, but maybe that, I don't know if that's a true piece of information. In that document, it said that. In the document regarding, it was like a 200-pager, you know, the one with the interview with Keegan Klein. They mentioned that in there. Yeah, it's it's spatter. There's, there's no the word is spatter, not splatter. I 
disconnecting KK from Richard Allen because they made a plea now. I don't know. I don't know. They say that the scene was an Odin crime scene. It's like they want a child killer out. <laughs> I, uh, man, I almost have to. I should maybe we should play the audio in the background from the that uh, court TV clip. I don't know. Could maybe try that. Is it on their uh, channel or? Oh, the Odin defense claims true. That one? That um, law enforcement sort of wrongfully rejected this theory. Is there any weight to that? Is that something where maybe they we see the official investigation case for the murders? And it's so disturbing to hear more about the homicides themselves and the crime scene. It's just heartbreaking to think about what those girls went through. Oh, and right. Obviously, the official investigation is saying they believe Richard yeah, it's weird, too, because the murder sheet, um, you know, if all this turns out where it's just Richard Allen are the spreaders of the most of all the false information that's been, uh, you know, or not false, but information that was used uh, as theorizing for other people. Yeah, wouldn't that be weird? Allen does it, but these three investigators may have been sort of offshoots. And I think one thing that we're really I curious think, I to I think know, that's what you get when you just sort of jump into the case like three or so years in and, and you kind of just grab onto something and who is claiming uh, I'm not going to say who told me that Tyler but uh, I've heard it twice now from two different people that uh, absolutely know the reality is is the allegation that um, law enforcement sort of wrongfully rejected this theory is there any weight to that is that something where this ritualistic isn't this from another video from a long time ago which also means they have inmates to practice Odinism and the guards are allowed to wear patches okay so where does that get us that gets us now to the um, affidavit of Sergeant Randy Jones a correctional officer who says, I've been an acting supervisor in APOD where the defendant is housed. I do not practice Odinism and that Norse paganism heathenry or heathen, yeah, heathenry is my practicing religion. So he's not practicing Odinism, but he's practicing a different form of paganism called Norse paganism heathenry. I, I do wear patches on my uniform that identify me as someone who practices Norse paganism heathenry, but then says I'm not part of a cult, I'm not part of a radical hate group, I've never had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the defendant where I tried to influence him in any way. But he is wearing the patches and he does practice a different form of, I guess, Nordic pa paganism. Nordic then we've got paganism. another one, affidavit from Sergeant Joshua Robinson. Number one, I do not, and this is with a capital N-O-T, practice Odinism. I do wear patches on my uniform that can be, but are not, associated with Odinism. This guy, I think that means, there's a lot of negatives in there, but I think that means he's wearing Odinism patches on his uniform. So the defense is not, like, lying about this. And the other guy's wearing patches, too. No, no, it doesn't say that. It says that I do wear patches on my uniform that can be, but are not associated with Odinism. He didn't say he's wearing Odinism patches. He said that there's people that do associate some of those things with Odinism. <laughs> it's not worded that way at all. That the patches pay the utmost respect to my religious higher power, the name, the same way a Christian person would wear a cross. Two. Um, and then he says, the patches pay the utmost respect to my religious higher power, the same way a Christian person would wear a cross. And I get it. Hey, you're allowed to practice whatever religion you want in this. I don't know, why do you look like Beetlejuice, Rebenzo? You ever asked yourself that question? It's country. That is clear. Um, it's just, I guess, a little unusual that you're wearing your, your your patches or your religion on your 
vest that's part of your correctional uniform, but apparently they were. So, despite that grain of salt I had for the defense, there's a... There's yeah, I sure as hell, uh, sure hell hope not, Rebenzo. Man. Another troll just showing up. More than a grain of truth to what they're alleging here in terms of what they saw inside this prison. Well, if you, if you showed up to the show earlier, Sassy Sandy, you would have seen that your comment right there is absolutely ludicrous. They didn't find three shoes. Uh, when somebody said, hey, I found the shoe, it was the one that was in the water, and then Libby's other shoe was underneath Abby, and underneath the shoe was the cell phone. So the you know remembering of like, oh, there's the shoe was found on the other side of the creek, as we are already discussed for like five minutes early on, uh, wasn't found on the other side of the creek it was found in the water so somebody's probably going hey i found it they're right there and then somebody on this bank probably said oh they found the shoe is, is it a black nike you know like that isn't that really obvious man this case has attracted some of the dumbest people uh that have ever lived in society okay i'm sorry but it's just the truth all right let's see what so now doing. they're able to make these arguments that they can they can connect the Odinism in the prison with their allegations of this Odinistic ritualistic murder scene. Yeah, but that's what that's what they did. They did that intentionally, though. So they had these crazy YouTubers saying, oh, there's this Odinism, Odinism, Odinism. Oh, man, it's Odinism. It's all over the place, Odinism. And then they go, oh, shit, man, we can, uh, let's tie that into those guards that were there. <laughs> it's insane. Why would those Odinistic guards, you know, which they aren't even that, they were just pagans, why would they um, want to harm or treat Richard Allen badly when he is taking the rap for apparently something they did? Can anybody explain that one? And the answer is no. This is nuts! <laughs> Bring back to the thing. I mean, I do, I do admit that it's, it. I mean, I, you know, like I was even talking to somebody today, and I go, isn't it ridiculous that they literally did have on patches? You know, it's like, oh man, I thought that was all just total bogus crap. You know, but they literally have them on. So you got <laughs> that. That comedy just made there is true. Think tank. Judge Gail Byers, Wayne Richter, Michael Sterling. W where am I? Where? What world am I in, Michael Sterling? We've got, you know, when this first broke, I was like, hey, oh, man, that grain of salt is so heavy. But now all of a sudden there's a grain of truth to it. That the, that the, the correctional officer. Yeah, only that they had the patches on there right but uh, none of the other stuff was is proven to be true at all that he was treated badly and everything hey thanks calamity colleen does it doesn't it seem more likely the guards would be white supremacists over pagan heathens in india uh, maybe has the uh two poses of the girls been confirmed uh what do you mean the two poses here hold on a second Saying hello to the wife. All right, so let's see. Let me read that again. Has the two poses of the girls been confirmed? Sounds totally ridiculous, but what has been released? They are posed like two tarot cards. It's nuts. I don't No, They, I mean, I, I, I just was saying earlier, I saw the images, right? So I've seen them. And it's not, you know. Like the, when people say tarot cards, I don't know what that means. What, like, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by tarot cards? I mean, I know what a tarot card is, but what nobody said. I don't remember anybody, anybody saying that. Welcome, Laura Steele, to Oogla Boogla Freaks. Okay, so uh, the way it is, 
is, you know, Abby is on the ground and her hand, arms are kind of like this. You know, like basically, let me, I'll just do an example. Right, watch. See this, what I'm doing right here? It was kind of like this, right? You know, it's a little bit like that. Like that, uh, laying on her back, right? Then, apparently, she, she does have jeans on, but those are Libby's jeans. Uh, Libby did not wear sweatpants that day like we all thought for literally six years. Okay, she had jeans on. I thought they were, and they, they're a little loose on her, but it just might be because, it, you know. And then her left leg is straight, and there's some, like, white sort of, I don't know if it was sand or what's on it, something on there. And then her right leg is underneath the left leg, and both of her shoes are on. And then there's, like, a... Um, a larger stick that kind of goes all along her left leg and then over her left shoulder and then there's these other a stick that goes underneath her chin and it seems like like they were starting to like build something you know like a lean-to or something like that don't they don't look like any kind of uh, designs or anything like that no not like the diagram yeah. yeah it doesn't look like the drawings at all I don't see anything like the um, you know, the crisscrossing diagram that they drew. It doesn't look like that at all. And there's no antlers, by the way. You know, roughly resembling antlers. So why do you think they put that in the, uh, the document? Because they were like, ooh, the antlers. Wow, okay, so this really is that. No, I mean, it do there's no antlers anywhere, everybody. There's a stick you know, part of one of the sticks off go off of her shoulder and the other one goes off the other shoulder, but that doesn't look like an antler. It's crazy. And then um, Ab uh, Libby is, you can see Libby's feet in the shot of Abby. And you can see that they're, it's correct, like they're angled sort of like, uh, like their heads are farther apart. And so they're kind of like laying like this, right? And then basically Libby doesn't have any clothes on. They blacked out, you know, there's circle, dark circles where they, um, you know, whoever released the image covered up, you know, privates. And then her left arm is like as if she's reaching up or somebody had just dragged her on the ground. And then her, and her head is turned in that direction. And then her right arm is just down by her side and there's blood on her fingers and there's some a little bit of blood on her face and around there's a stick that kind of covers, goes across her over her throat area. All right, so that is, I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, I mean, it's horrible to see. Uh, it's really weird when, you know, the Abby one, this, none of us got to see Libby that day where we all saw Abby's 207 photograph. You know, so you see that she's got, and, and then Abby shot, she does have on the maroon shirt that you see when she's on the bridge. She has her two shoes on. And then, but she has Libby's pants on and Libby's sweatshirt. So it's sort of interesting, like how that would have had to develop. Because her shoes would have had to have been taken off to remove the tight jeans that she had on. And then the Libby's pants would put on and then, then her shoes put on again after that. So... Anyways, that's, uh, you know, the description there. Yeah, I was thinking something like that. Boop. I was thinking that um, it could have just also been that Abby's, Libby's clothes was the only ones that, that they were able to get back on to a person 
um, after the fact because it would be really difficult to put on like wet jeans on back onto Libby, right? And it would be hard to put the wet jeans of Abby back on herself, but if you had a bigger pair of jeans, they would go on to Abby and it would be easy to put that sweatshirt on too. And then the rest of the clothing was just tossed into the water. So I guess that's where we're, we're at here. But, uh, you know, they, I was also told that they haven't found any connection between Keegan Klein and Richard Allen, which is just <laughs> absolutely mind-boggling. For the people that actually know the case and all the different elements of it, it's absolutely nuts, you know. No, nah, I don't think they were killed in the water. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why he did that. Maybe he was trying to, had a little remorse going on, you know, dressed or something like that. Huh? Let's see, do you think Abby grabbed the clothes to run away while he was killing Libby? Um, I don't know. We don't know any of those things, Cindy. And we don't have the crime scene photos. Just the one shot, right there. We don't, we don't have shots from all over the place, you know. I think that, uh, you know, you probably get good information in that 136-page document. It sounds like they were, other than the rune angle they tried to sell. See, the way it worked, like it was like this. This is how it worked. They had a, uh, you know, these wackos were saying, ooh, it's got to be Nordic runes, the F, the F, the F, the F, ooh, ooh, ooh. And, was, and they were looking into the... the Brad Holder guy and all those other people a long time ago. And then um, when the defense got a hold of the, the crime scene photos, they go, oh man, those could be symbols too. Look at that, we could make that. And then they had the guards wearing that. So you try to put them all together and it makes this crazy story. Well, they were killed by some other tree, and in that document it mentions, like it's not really that far away. I think the tree with the F on it might be the one where they were killed at, and then just moved a little bit. Yeah, I mean, wh wherever they were killed is where all the blood went, you know? And so... If, let's say let's say Libby was face down when she was killed, and she had a the tie dye shirt on. I mean, all you do is if you took the tie dye shirt off and, and then you throw that in the water, her pants are going to be clean, and you know basically you're not going to have um, blood on other parts of the body, and so you know you don't see a lot of blood on the rest of her body other than up near the neck area and the her face and her hand so yeah so this is really what it is here you guys there's no uh, line that goes across I mean this looks a little bit more like the Barbara McDonald drawing that she did Let me see. Yeah, see, I don't really see anything going up like that. This is sort of similar to that. But on that one, they have another little thing going up here. And that seems to match this little thing. So maybe they have a different 
I mean, a way they took a photograph or something. Don't know. So man, it makes you wonder, you know, if there isn't a connection with Keegan Klein, then how, you know, what, what happened that day? Was he really like my original theory? I think we have trolls in here tonight, you guys, a lot of them. I don't think it looks like her drawing much at all. I mean, it has a little parts that are similar, but other than that, not a lot of similarities. But maybe they used a different, like you, you, you cover it with, um, you know, that luminol, and then at night you film it and you could see where all the blood really is. Mm -hmm. I don't need to look that up. Thanks. Well, my original theory for three years was that it was a, I, this is exactly how I, I would word it. And for the people that are around here, you'd remember it for three and a half, four years, I would say. I think it's a serial killer like person who was at the bridge that day and was just hunting for somebody that fell into his trap. You know, he's waiting there, waiting, and finally he knew when people were, I mean, I mean, I could actually explain, I could show it to you. <laughs> like over and over and over, I'd say the same thing, and people go, Gray, good, he keeps saying the same. Yeah, well, because there was nothing else at the time, right? Here, I'll show you on the screen here. See, what I would say was, the girls are dropped off here, and the killer, he might have, might have been sitting over here on the bench, something like that, and they came walking in, maybe he was even standing right over here, waiting, but he knew the traffic because he'd been there for a while, so he was looking, waiting, and watching. That's what makes Richard Allen's timing so odd, because he got there and seemed like he was on a mission, like he knew that Libby and Abby were going to be there, or at least Libby. So anyways, the girls get dropped off right here. They walk this way, and they're walking, but he, he keeps watching them from back here, and then he gets to this point, and the girls keep, well, they're, they're over here, and he stands about right here, because you can see from that spot, you can see that right there, and you can see over here, and he knew, because he'd been there for a while, that there was not another person in front of the girls. So when the girls got here, they... Um, walked across but now it turns out where Richard Allen was here and he would have had to pass them but um, I would always my story was they would walk across theory anyway and then he took the photograph another one and then when they're about right here he comes out of the woods and makes his move and falls in across I think that part's still in play and then at 2.13, as we found out later, was when the video was taken. And then he catches up to them, says, guys, down the hill, and kills them. And we never really knew. You know, our theory was that he escaped through the cemetery and walked this direction. Down here, and made his way back to the car parked at the... We didn't know about the car until 2019. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm still going to hold out some hope for that one Zozo but it's crazy yeah yeah so check out your uh message there Zozo if you want to on Facebook wouldn't that be weird if it comes back to that well all the people apologize to me 
who said how lame it was that I never said it was social media related. Now, what's an Idor? What's an Idor, demon? 1800. What's an Idor? Yeah, you have to. Uh, let's look that one up. What's an Idor? Or is that how an actual idiot spells idiot? Let's see, uh, the Brighton Axe murder, her husband was found guilty. Okay, awesome. All right, you guys, don't forget, if you'd like to help support this channel, we do try to reach the goals every single night on here so that at the end of the month, uh, I can actually make an income on here and the we can kick ass in the charity world too. Uh, we've given $168,000 to true crime related charities and a DNA fund since January of 2020. And if anybody, if there's another channel out there that can even come close, let me know. And no, I, I didn't say that, Zozo. I just told you just now. I didn't say that before. stepped up and started putting all the pieces together and the police really did a great job yeah the police did a great job the only thing that happened was whoever you know the conservation officer didn't come forward and you know like you would think later on he would have went wow did anybody um you know did anybody look at this guy again i mean he was there thanks georgina stoliker and charlotte denny in the photos what do you mean uh well it's yeah it's kind of similar looking you know i don't it's hard to really say if it's up or not because she's on her back on the ground you know but it appears that it's kind of the same you know like it's the same style she's just her back of her head is on her ponytail or whatever or up or whatever it was <clears throat> you know what i mean It's hard to say. Can't tell. Well, I think they did do a great job other than that one piece of information. Yeah. Yeah, they worked their asses off, did everything they thought of, but uh, didn't really, you know, they didn't have that one piece of information. The cool part is when Doug Carter said, we just want to know who the driver of the vehicle parked at the abandoned CPS building was. That would be, they, well, now they've got the guy's name. It is kind of weird. And apparently they're, you know, they're out there. Well, I don't know. So, so. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's pretty weird. I didn't, it doesn't, I'm not going to say where I got him from or anything. They're out there. They're in the community of YouTube. You know, YouTubers and podcasters alike. Uh, I'm just not going to show the images. And hope I hope they don't make it out. I would say though, if you know, if these are the only crime scene images that made it out, compared to literal, you know, crime scene photos taken by law enforcement, you know, detailed images, that would be better. Uh, hopefully, they can shut down anything else. I mean, the defense is like they're just doing anything they can. I, I think they should be held severely responsible. They're the ones that are putting this stuff out. No doubt about it. Likely even using other people like in, you, know, you give it to somebody, then somebody else gives it to somebody, then that person's finally the one that leaks it, that kind of thing. I don't know what that means, Sea Bean. I have already, already have a website called, I actually have a web, site called Gray Hughes 
H U E S. I own the domain, anyways, or at least I did. I don't know if I got rid of it. But what does that mean? So, any, anyways, everybody, if you're new here and you don't know who the hell I am, my name is Gray Hughes <laughs> of Gray Hughes Investigates on YouTube. I cover all kinds of true crime stories, thousands of them over the years. I, lately, I've been covering the Delphi a lot more. I went there. It seems like there's just so much stuff going on all the time, every day. And so I've been covering a little bit more lately. Uh, my name is Gray Hughes. When I was born, my birth certificate said L. Period Gray Hughes, right? Because uh, they were just going to, my name was going to be Gray, but it'd be L. Gray Hughes. I don't know why they did that, but the doctor, who was a family friend, wrote Lance on there where the L was, which whenever you hear the story, it sounds crazy, but, uh, you know, my mom actually verifies it every year because I'm always like, come on, I mean, is that? So, you know, he named me Lance. <laughs> the doctor did. So some people call me, hey, Lance, like they're being really super sleuthy and because they got inside info, even though I've told the story a thousand times on my show. Yeah. When I graduated from college, it said Gary Hughes. <laughs> yeah. So I just did a U-turn at the top of the stage and got it fixed. Is anybody there? Like nobody's even talking. It's like a... Ghost Town. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What's the motive for any of the... That's why I said he was a serial killer-like person. It could be that he wanted to try it out. He always wanted to do this, Richard Allen. And then once he did it, he didn't like it. You know, he thought, oh, I, yeah, this will be so great. And it wasn't something, so it could just be, you know, it was a one-off thing that he did. So, you know, it's not a serial killer, but I was just saying the mentality behind him, like, oh, yeah, he wanted to, to go out and do it. Hey, uh, Eugenie, you're still here. Did you send me your um, email? We got to do that. We're all going to do the, uh, the mod... Uh, Zoom or whatever the hell, not Zoom, a team meeting or something. <laughs> mm hmm. Yeah. I agree with what? You guys are so far behind, I don't even know what you're responding to. What do you mean you didn't know there was a recorded tape, Karen? What do you mean? What case are you talking about? <laughs> the Delphi case, Libby holds up her phone and records a video, and on the video itself, you know how videos record audio? That's where the audio came from. What do you mean, how do I explain that? Why, why, um, I'm not going to respond to somebody named with, uh, Ron Logan, so see you later. Go find another place to do your craziness. Thanks, Amber Maiden. Um, I think there's been... I've, I've only seen two images from the crime scene itself. Someone just said that the uh, conversation office, conservation officer tape. Oh, that one. Oh. Well, that's what they, the document claimed. They just don't know where it is. But he gave his synopsis of it back then. And thanks, Amber Maiden. But if someone reliable says there's no connection to shots and climb the entire thing, has to be. I know, that's what I'm saying. That's why I want to. 
you know, I mean, I, it wouldn't, here's the thing. It would just go back to what I was originally thinking at the very beginning. You know, that's it. <laughs> I mean, it literally goes right back. You do a complete about face and you go back to the original thinking about, you know, he was just there hunting for a victim that day. But man, how, it's, isn't it just weird? Like, okay, the resemblance to his daughter, his daughter wearing the tie-dye. I guess apparently, you know, everybody in the town had the tie-dye tie shirts, but, you know, and there's pictures of his daughter at the bridge, you know. I'm sure he'd, I'm sure he'd been there before, or whatever, and maybe be, by going out there, he started thinking about how he could do this. Maybe he noticed there was girls out there, but how did he end up, you know, like, Libby, was Libby and Abby just randomly chosen? Well, how do we know that, Tracy? If his phone pinged. I thought you were, Karen, you were talking about the, uh, the recording of the phone. But yeah, the conservation officer in the 136-page document that we were reading, they mentioned, or maybe it was in another document. There's been so many now, I just, it's hard to remember. Apparently, there was a recording... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the part I keep saying tomorrow, that uh, why doesn't he ever... The conservation officer, you would think, would come forward at some point and have said, Wow, did you guys ever look into this one guy? Because he was there. You know? And it might be that he didn't have enough information to make something of it. You know, maybe if the conservation officer knew that uh, they saw a man coming in at a specific time, the three girls, and then also he said he saw the same three girls. Maybe if he had known that, it might have made sense. Because he seemed like he was interested. We need to find out who those three girls are. So what, later on, they did talk to those three girls, and they said they saw a guy coming in here. But was that information then relayed to the people else, you know, the people below who would say, oh, shit, man, I talked to the guy who said, see what I'm saying? Look it, look it. I bet you that's how it worked right there. <laughs> Doesn't that make sense what I just said there? Look at that, how that probably worked. Because he said the conservation officer was like a note. Find out who those three girls were. I bet you anything, had the conservation officer later been told, and, and like an update, hey, uh, there was three girls there. They said that they saw a man wearing the same stuff that was on the bridge. He would go, holy shit, I interviewed that guy. Here we go, right? You see what I'm saying? But I think there's people that weren't involved. Uh, they, they weren't allowed to see information that weren't at a specific level. So like these lower level people, like a conservation officer, game warden, whatever you want to call him, he, he didn't get to see uh, a little piece of information that would have made a difference. Hmm? Did that make sense what I was just saying to you guys? Or did, you, did it go over it into deaf ears yet again? Just think about how that worked. He got called. Uh, the tip line was called by Richard Allen. Richard Allen then, uh, you know, a conservation officer meets him in a store parking lot. And he says, yeah, I was out there. I passed three girls. And that person was like, oh, this guy probably doesn't have anything to do with it. He wouldn't be telling me. So then he, uh, and then, but he mentions three girls were there. Hey, and then his notes are, we need to find out who those three girls are. And then after that, it probably just never looked at it again, really, right? So for him, it didn't mean anything. But had later on, one of the investigators updated and said, so everybody, yes, there was three girls. They saw a man wearing the same similar clothing, clothing as the guy on the bridge, and we think he's the killer. 
that might have alerted the conservation officer to say, wow, that is crazy because I interviewed a guy that passed those same three girls. Maybe we need to talk to him again. See? See how that works? Much appreciated also. Loved your platypus quote. <laughs> Was that you that commented on the underneath there? Yeah. My platypus quote, if you missed it, was God must have been drunk to create an animal that looks a little bit like a beaver that has a duck bill and lays eggs like a reptile does and then it has poisonous barbs on both of its legs. Yeah, I don't think somebody thought through that one. Um, let's see, I get how he can't see information, but how are you not going to your superiors once the dang video came? Come, well, because it, he, he wasn't wearing the same clothes, uh, Shimona V. So when he interviewed him, he probably was just wearing his, you know, like a golf shirt or some shit. And so how would he have known when the video came out? I think Richard Allen came forward and called the tip line when he saw his image on the bridge knowing that three girls had already talked to, or seen him. So he wanted to get in, in front of it. So everyone thinks, wow, what a great Samaritan he is, man. He's just so awesome. Uh, but I think he wanted to just get, a, get ahead of it to see what they had because, boy, he's in trouble now. Three girls saw him. And uh, then they've also got an image of him. He didn't know at the time how the image was created. And so he came forward, and he was probably likely shocked for five years, just sitting around going, how come no, and that's why he looks so different over those five years. He literally was just wasting away, probably feeling like he's living on borrowed time. Maybe didn't want to move to bring suspicion. He's probably paranoid too. And then he, you know, finally, yeah, the cops come a-knockin'. Thanks, Norm Scanlon. Years of wonder about what? It's six years, and he may have wondered. And it's refreshing to see someone who speaks their mind. Yeah, well, I always do. People don't like it, too. You know, like, oh, God, Gray, you're so mean. Look at you. Yeah, and what I've said about, uh, you know, Tony Klein has nothing to do with it, that's awesome, you know. But, you know, it's um, the way, the fact that, <laughs> the way we, he was written about in the hundred and some odd page document, the interview of Kagan Klein, and they were trying to, associate his father in that document and then Keegan Klein himself threw his dad under the bus in the Barbara McDonald interview and then the information in actual police reports regarding Tony Klein was horrendous right but it was still just a, a theory not a factual statement of you know the, there's a big difference in saying these two sentences if you said you know, John Smith is the killer. Or if he said, I think John Smith could very well be the killer. That's a huge difference. That's a, one of them is a speculation or a claim, you know, like as a possibility. And the other one is an outright statement of a true fact. Now, I think that Richard Allen is the killer in this case, right? And and uh, let me look around again. I got a I got I got an advantage, everybody. He was arrested for the murders because of evidence they had. <laughs> I know that's weird. I know that's weird, everybody. Yeah, hit the uh, like button while you're here, everybody. It's really simple. Go ahead and hit that like button, right? 
now. I'm fired out of it, not Hit that like button. 10, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Hit that like button. 5, 10, 15, 20. Hit that like button. Like button, like button, like button, like button, like button, like button. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, Yeah. What does that have to do with anything, Tracy? Keegan Klein and Tony Klein both went to Vegas right after the murders. And then they come back home. I mean, what about that part, you guys? He comes home and he doesn't give law enforcement the phone he was using that was communicating with Libby. And then he gets taken down to the station and he's asked questions regarding the Abby and Libby case. He goes home and produces that phone and starts deleting and uninstalling and deleting stuff. You see what I'm saying? I mean, it is incredible. So he just did that? I mean, I just. Can you explain how they had Alan's car on surveillance but didn't know him? The, are you the same person? Yeah, get rid of this person again. So you had Ron Logan, um, Barbara Mack. It's a car that looks similar. That's why, Barbara. Okay, it was a car that looks similar. It didn't have a license plate that they could read, okay? Thank you. And also, uh, guess what, everybody? Richard Allen admitted he confessed to killing. But of course, right after he admitted killing, there's no... It's just pure coincidence, again, that right after admitting it, he came down with a bout of craziness. The very next day, it's like, oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. You know, remember in uh, Caddyshack when uh, the guy, uh, Rodney Dangerfield, gets hit in the arm and he goes, ooh, 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 and he wiggles his arm around and stuff? That's what it was kind of like. You've got uh, Richard Allen confessing, realizing what a mistake it was. The wife told his lawyers, and they're like, whoa, holy shit. Oh, wait, wait, wait. you got to be crazy. You're, you're, you're nuts, right? I mean, what's been going on? Let's pin it on these guys wearing those patches. We'll tie it all in with the other Odin stuff. And ooh, it's just so ridiculous. Oh, they just happen to be there while he's drooling spaghetti all over his shirt so they could take a picture of it, right? And look, that picture right there is the stain on his shirt. The emoji there. Yeah, it did happen. Because his defense team even said, yeah, they were pretty damning statements. Don't you remember? They're just making up uh, excuses. Man, you're so paranoid, Cindy. It's like, uh, it's, cra it's crazy. Let's see, Richard Allen was at the crime scene. Richard Allen confessed to the crime. How could he possibly be guilty? <laughs> hey, that's one you didn't actually have to put sarcasm at the end. And look at that, you guys were almost at the goal there for tonight. We are a third of the way through the month. Uh, let's see. Which channel is at the crime scene? Yeah. Yeah, well the thing is is Richard Allen with his own words. Guess what? Guess what he said he was wearing. Let me let me uh let me play this. Richard Allen said he was wearing light blue jeans, a dark blue Carhartt jacket, uh, with a hoodie and a head covering. That doesn't look anything like the guy on the bridge. Are you kidding me? And then also one of the three girls said he had a face covering. What's that white thing underneath his chin there? Was that like a little thing that he pulled up over his mouth? And maybe that's why they didn't know if he had a goatee or not. But you can see it there, right? You can see it. Mm -hmm. Hey, thanks, Paulette Leonard and Sonia. <laughs> yeah, he's got light blue jeans on, a blue Carhartt jacket, a hoodie with a head covering, 
And you know what? Um, if you're not, if you're new here, let me show you what is a possibility here. Let me show you this. Let me go back to the. And that's my own version of the walk cycle where I keep the bridge stable or the, um, you know, the bridge stable so you can see how he moves. Yeah, this, this one right here. Watch this. I think that this image is the, what he was wearing. And so here's the thing, when people say head covering, how many of you think if somebody was wearing a baseball cap, they would say head covering? This is what we talked about this a few weeks back. Who out there wearing a baseball cap would you say, I was wearing a head covering? I think nobody would. However, if you're wearing a hat like that, you would say, you might say it was a head covering just because you're not like, what well, was it, a stocking cap, a beanie? Somebody else had a, some weird name for it. Yeah, but you're, I know, but there's a whole bunch of different names, Tracy, so you don't know what somebody might call that. So see this one right here? This hat. Now take a look at that hat. And then let's look at the, um, and it sort of sticks out right there. Notice how it sticks out in the shadow on his face from the light there? Just like that. And the only reason there's a shadow on his face right here is because of how it sticks out in the front. So if you take that image and you look at the... There it is. Now look, look at this. Look at that hat on his head. Like I think the hoodie is bunched up right behind his head and isn't actually on his head. It's bunched up behind him and maybe he had it on his head before. So watch it again, watch it again. Once it gets bigger here. I'm gonna move it like right there. I mean, just look at that right there. Can you see that? And then go back to the, over here. See that? <laughs> I mean, that really could be the hat that he's wearing. Uh, something or one just like it. It's the exact same color. Uh, we already did a thing on that a while back. And just, just kind of watch it. Just look at it. You can see it could be that. It's uh, pretty wild, pretty wild. Well, thank you, Green. Hey, make sure to hit that uh, subscribe button out there if you're not a subscriber. I lost a lot of, uh, about a hundred subscribers uh, because I'm, you know, oh wait, I'll probably lose some more by saying it, but um, I'm actually supporting Israel in their, what's going on here. I don't support um, babies having their heads chopped off, okay? No matter what happened to you in the past. All right, so if you'd like to unsubscribe because of that, feel free to do so. Let's see, my point is the defense just needs to provide reasonable doubt. I mean, there's actually people out there supporting what happened. Those people are disgusting people, all right? I don't care what you think about, like, what happened. There is no moral. There is no uh, sort of equivocation, some sort of... I mean, it's funny. I listened to a person today, and they almost said exactly the same wording that I did. They were on, like, a really big, huge channel. It was strange. I was, wasn't sure... But they even said there's no, well, this and then, but. I hope everybody in here uh, supports Israel in this situation and is against what happened. 
if you if you aren't one of those people and you think there was some sort of positive like it was good that uh, finally Hamas was able to then you're a pile of shit uh, of a person and, a, and sick at that you need to do some soul searching you know has Israel always been perfect hell no you know shit like that but there's you know there's lots of reasons why they've been battling but what happened the other day is sort of a game changer in terms of how people should be viewing this yeah 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 i don't want any uh like innocent people you know like civilians and so forth but when you say the children of palestine what does that got to do with anything let's see i stand with uh, israel yeah except they they are <laughs> how do you free people that their whole mission is to kill somebody because of their religious beliefs yeah. So if you haven't been around, you don't really. So here's the thing: is uh, I'll, I'm going to say it again for the people here, even though we're, we, you know, I don't really have much more to say about this, you know, the Delphi. But see, there was never a country called Palestine. Hopefully, you guys realize that, right? There was just a land area, like saying the Northwest, and there was people living there, indigenous people, right? And then uh, in World War II, the you know, Britain took uh, control of the whole area. And then after six million Jews were murdered, and, you know, Israel, uh, Israel was at the homeland of the Jews, you know, thousands of years ago, you know, England said, well, hey, let's make, give them this little portion of that land that we took over. And then that ended up displacing some of the people that were there. And then Jordan was also created out of that. So Jordan wasn't a place that existed, but was also taking the same land that was once Palestine, or you know the area, the Northwest. And so nobody complains that uh, Jordan. Nobody, uh, anybody out there at all, complains that Jordan has land that quote Palestinians lived in too. Right? How come? And the reason is because they're Arab and uh, Muslim, and then it's okay that they took their land, but man, you can't have the Jewish people doing that. And even though nobody took anything, right, the British just divided it up that way. And then once it was divided up, uh, countries tried to battle out, uh, like from all sides attacked Israel, and Israel won each time. And they then built a bigger country because of that, then over the last, I don't know, 40 years or so, they've been giving back land after land after land to create some sort of peace, and it just doesn't work, okay? And uh, it, it's just, the truth is this, the Palestinian people are, there's really good people there as well, but they're run, the Gaza Strip is run by terrorists, okay? They actually got voted in. So that means a large portion of them support what they do. The, the world would be... I think uh, there would be a chance that there could be peace. Except the countries around there don't want there to be peace. They don't want there to be peace. They want to keep the Palestinians down um, for political reasons. So like... All the neighbors around there, like Syria and Iran and, you know, I mean, I think Egypt's probably trying to change a little bit here. They want to keep the Palestinians as sort of the whipping boys towards the Israelis. And they don't want to help them. They want to keep them miserable and down. And then there's violence that erupts. And, you know, how, how are the Israelis ever supposed to trust and say, yeah, we're going to lighten up our restrictions and this kind of thing when every time they do something really bad happens and the reason something really bad happens is because they're funded by these other countries who want to keep it going man it's so obvious it's just one of those things where <laughs> people don't want to see it they just hear the little left wing kind of oh it's so the bad israel bad israel 
all the time. It's the same damn thing. And now you see these idiot Congress people that can't even condemn 40 babies getting killed. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Yeah. While weapons manufacturers are definitely eating a... Uh, I'm not sure what that means. Mm -hmm. You think they could live in there? <laughs> do, you, do you think that it, uh, Jewish people could live in... Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's a great point that Bad Mom said. Palestinians live in Israel peacefully. No Israelis live in Palestine because Hamas is in charge. Of course. <laughs> you think if they... Do you think that if you were Jewish and you moved into Palestine that you'd have a good chance of living... Their, Hamas's goal is to wipe Israel off the face of the earth and Jewish people. Yeah. So it shows you the difference in mentality where Israel actually has Palestinians living in Israel and everybody gets along. So you got to kind of look at it like that. Uh, what do you mean, you people? What the hell are you? Jesus, you guys are... Yeah. Got some crazy ones in here tonight. <whistles> uh, pay attention to what's going on. Grace, right? This has nothing to do with the energy. <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about. Hey, Tyler, how about you just... I tell you what, Tyler. Why don't you start a YouTube channel... And you say what you want to think, okay? And I'm going to have my own, and I'm going to say what I want to think. And if people like it, they like it. If they don't, they don't. But man, you guys, what a, what a tough night on there. We just barely squeaked by on the goal there. <whistles> wow. Let's see. If the government won't officially confirm that Iran funded this, trip used to... Huh? I mean, it's, 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 it is a complicated sort of geopolitical situation. But, you know, there is no complication when you talk about people, you know, break, you know, coming into Israel, breaking in, and killing 260 kids partying, and killing 40 babies, and killing old people, and their mission was to kill Jews, not the, like, battling the military. Yes, they attacked a few installations, but they didn't, um, they didn't go there to do that. I think everybody, like I said yesterday, would think totally differently about this had they gone in there to attack military targets. Like if they literally had Hamas went in and attacked only military, people would think absolutely differently about this. But they didn't do that. They went in there to inflict terror and to kill absolutely innocent people. Now the wacko people out there that are just so pro, like, oh my God, they're not innocent. Nobody's innocent in Israel. They're all invaders. They're all invading. Oh, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Right, those, those babies, man, they were so mean because they, they lived there. Now, is it starting right now? Okay. Yep, see you tomorrow, Tracy. Hey, thanks, Joel Sane. Yeah, it's been a tough crowd tonight, man. I'll tell you that. Appreciate your support. Uh, let's see. I got to send an email really quick. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, there you go. I Plato, I just sent another email for the email address. 
Thank you, Tyler. Terrorists and extremists are sh You can just say the real word. Yeah. No matter what side they're on, they need to be stopped. Yeah, well, here's what I don't want. I don't want, once the images start coming back and, oh, look at the, what's going on in Palestine. Yeah. You're just going to have to let it be, man. This has to be taken care of once and for all, you guys. It needs to be taken care of. It has to be where Hamas is no longer there and maybe something good can come out of it. It's just so hard because, you know, they're the leaders in those in Palestine teach their kids that Israel does not exist as a country and they're merely invaders and they're just horrible people. And so they grow up hating, you know, so it makes it tough. And, 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 you know, you can actually sort of picture what it would be like if you were one of them, like, man, um, none of them remember what it was like when it was just uh, like a desert and people walking around, but <laughs> um, it's just too many people there to, you know, just overpopulated, just, I mean, what do you do? Well, one of the things you might think is that, like somebody like uh, Hezbollah and Syria, there might be some attacks coming from different directions that would create diversions where now they have to be fighting behind them or north of them instead of just over to the west in Gaza. Or actually, yeah, it would be the west in Gaza. I'm not sure why they call it. I guess West Bank is just West Bank because it's west of some bank. <laughs> uh, I hope we don't, we don't need to get involved. Israel can, they, they can take care of themselves. They know what they're doing. We might be able to, you know, need to help with, you know, some weaponry or whatnot, but if, now I would say if I was running the show and other countries like Iran and, um, you know, maybe Lebanon, get involved in Syria, then I would definitely come in to help out. Except that's happened to them before, and they beat them all back all those times too. And what they don't really, you know, remember is, you know, Israel is a nuclear power. They actually have nuclear warheads. Not that you'd want to use one of those, but they must sort of remember that this whole time that, they have the ability to completely annihilate a place like Iran. Oh yeah, they sent some pilots out. Nice. Yeah, the infidels, you know. <laughs> crazy, crazy, crazy. And let's see what time is it. So you, you guys think I should come back on later again and try to do the uh, get some phone calls coming in? We got one phone call last night from Israel. We actually that was kind of fun. It was neat. Uh, the numbers are you can still see them actually on the screen right there. See that? They're a nuclear power due to receiving 300 million a year. From U.S. taxpayers. <laughs> wow. Question everything is so on top of it, man. They are so intelligent. They just they have it all figured out. <coughs> wow. You're awesome. Wow. Go do that somewhere else, though. Thank you. Yeah, you always got these people that come in and they blast out stuff when it's not really the the reality of it. Yeah, if you get they get 300 million, is it for building nuclear bombs? Is that what they're doing? Yeah. Now we we won't be able to hear you anymore. Cuz you I, I can tell by your demeanor you're supporting what happened. Okay? every comment that you make. <laughs> 
as a positive. Uh, and this isn't one of the ones where I'm going to say, well, it's okay to have a different opinion. This isn't one of those. There is no other side. The only answer here is that the Hamas are terrorists and barbarically went into Israel and killed hundreds and hundreds of innocent people because they were Jewish. All right, now if you support that, you're not welcome here, and hopefully you're not welcome anywhere because that means you're something's wrong with you, right? Like literally, like technically, something is wrong with you. Now you can always tell when the people unsubscribe who think that way, that means they think that way. You know, it's like, oh, I unsubscribe, Gray. No, it's not that. It's just that you don't accept the fact that... No, no, no. There is no other side here, everybody. There is not. There is nothing. It's 100% in Israel's favor morally here. That's it. There is no other uh, side. Right. Now, you can have your discussions about, well, the... You know, people can't do this, and Israel blocks this, and they block that. That's great and everything. And that's why Hamas, if they wanted to, would have just attacked the military. But they didn't do that. They didn't do that. They chopped the heads off of 40 babies. Yeah, like little little infants that did absolutely nothing wrong to anybody. Uh, you know, if that isn't one of the most disgusting things you've ever heard in your entire life, then... I don't know what else is. Yeah. <laughs> well, I agree with that one, Timothy. I said it last night to the, much to the chagrin of somebody who said, Gray, your super chats would have been so much higher had you not um, said those negative things about our president. And I said, I, I, I just have to say him because I think Biden is the worst freaking president that we've ever had. He's one of the dumbest people there ever was. He can barely talk. Uh, he just stands there propped up by a like a like a wooden stick almost. He's insane. He is a plagiar. Like he literally took speeches and used them as, as his own for years and was called out on it but then later on nobody cared he's also creepy the way he fondles like parents have to move their kids away from him and stuff he, he's a, there's something wrong with the guy how he got in there i don't know all right yeah so if that's something that bothers you it just is what it is and it's okay if you don't like trump i'm just telling you what i think about biden right No, it, he's he's way dumber than Trump is. Hey, this guy is, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can understand you not liking him though, yeah. but don't try to pretend that Biden is somehow more capable. He is absolutely uh, nothing. I just. Whew. I mean, is there anybody that's actually proud of Joe Biden? Like when you go. God, we're so lucky. You wake up in the morning, get your cup of coffee with a smile on your face. Today's a great day. And you know why? Because Joe Biden's our president. Lots of great things are going to happen now. I don't think anybody out there thinks that. I think none of you think that. And if you do think that, if you actually say you think that, I don't believe you. All right? All right, awesome. Great way that we turned it into politics yet again. Forward to when we have hope. I know, I mean, I like I always say, man, micro, we need a micro type person to be president of the United States. A person that everybody likes, pragmatic, doesn't have an agenda. Wouldn't that be awesome? Doesn't have kids that go out and try to use their dad to get money and then give part of the money to their dad. We don't need that for damn sure. Mm. 
Gray, I'm leaving. I don't like that you don't like him. You can see how he like would talk loud at certain points. It probably even had it in bold so he could remember. Too many, uh, let's see. Uh, well, I don't have any have anxiety walking around outside like I did under Trump. Really? What anxiety did you have walking under Trump? That's weird. I didn't. I never felt anxiety whatsoever. I mean, what would make you anxious under him? All of the. Are you talking about all of the um, protests that were going on? What did he have to do with those? There's an episode of Star Trek that was like that, where they had a an ex-star captain, but he was put in a chair and propped up, and they would turn knobs and he would talk. That's what I feel like here. I mean, let me ask you this. Was it the first or fifth time that Biden shook hands to air where you thought, wow, uh, there's something weird here, where he literally sticks his hand out and starts shaking air? You know, like... There's nobody there. Wasn't that a clue at some point? Yeah. Or he starts walking into a curtain. <laughs> Where am I going? Where am I going? <laughs> I think it's hilarious. It's, uh, it's insane. Yeah. I've seen him fall asleep. Yeah. It's nuts, isn't it? Yeah, I remember that. You lying dog face pony soldier. What the hell? Remember Corn Pop? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's so crazy. Joe Biden makes some of the most racist comments you could ever imagine, but they just, they're okay because it's Uncle Joe. You know, like, you can't go to a 7 Eleven without somebody with an Indian, you know, he just goes on and on. He does. He says stuff like that all the time. That's why they whisk him away really quickly. I mean, you know, you know, it's. Uh, <laughs> you ever seen when people are playing tennis and they're ready? That, that's how all of his handlers are. They're all standing next to him, ready to hit the next volley back. Because you never know, man. They're all waiting for the comment to come out. Yeah. Anyways. Ah, that feels good. Well, don't a lot of guys have hairy legs? I mean, Jesus. And, you know, don't blame him for all of the classified documents sitting in his car and his garage. Don't blame him for that. It's okay when he does that, but, you know, if it's, <laughs> if it's anybody else, boy, we got to bring him up on charges. Guy. Yeah, he was a great dude, wasn't he? Yeah, he was awesome. Right, and why does a VP have classified documents in his garage? What was on those documents? Did they refer to the big guy at all? <laughs> no. Yeah. I just want to have somebody in office that is competent at this point. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, who said he was this account? Yeah. Saw so his brother leak nude picture. Maybe that's what's propping him up. Pop it. Uh, Gray, what do you think about uh, Kamala? Oh, she's a she's she's a beaut. Uh, let me ask you that. If like for for those who are Democrats out here, I mean, I, I mean, I don't mind what party you are. Like, we're, I'm friends with all the Democrats too. So here's the thing: is um, does Kamala Harris inspire confidence? Like, you you think she would be a great president, or even mildly effective at all?
<laughs> yeah, well, the thing is, you guys are, uh, I mean, like it. if you're a Democrat in here, I like you just as much as everybody else. It doesn't matter. I just want to be able to say what I want to say when I say it. And it shouldn't bother you because you guys all said the same shit about Trump for years. And I feel worse than about, I think, technically, Biden is horrible. Okay, so, um, you know, why can't I say that? See, I keep saying that to people. Why can't I say that without you getting mad? But everybody was supposed to listen when you all, when things were all said about Trump for years. Now, whenever I say that, it doesn't mean, oh, my God, Gray, you're a Trumper. Just because I say that sentence, you know. You don't, nobody knows who I voted for. And the thing is, is my, uh, okay, here's how, I'll actually tell you. Here's what I'll tell you. The first time, first go around, I voted for, I wrote in Mark Rubio because I didn't know, Marco Rubio, because I didn't know any, you know, like I just, who, who knows? I thought Rubio would have been pretty good. And then the second time I voted for Trump because I could see Biden was exactly how he is right now. So what do you think of that? Isn't that weird? You know what sucks is that if you're somebody who voted for Trump, uh, the a lot of the political left and hardcore lefties, they make you feel embarrassed to talk about it. And, and not because there's something to be embarrassed about. It's the way they treat you when you talk about it. It's really nutty it's crazy so there's a lot of people that don't see it the same way that you you guys do yeah you shouldn't be linda i kind of felt bad i didn't vote the first time for him and and you notice this that uh, people on the right they don't unfriend people or unsubscribe to people who are liberal but liberals always unsubscribe and quit supporting and uh, you know, what do you call it? Uh, you know, where they just disappear. I forgot the term. When if you're a supporter of Trump, you know, it's like a it's a really weird thing. Or it doesn't even have to be Trump. As long if you're just found out that you're a conservative of some sort, you're treated like a second class citizen, like you're just a terrible person. It's weird. Like we just, our brains aren't really functioned. We don't really see all the nuances that the rest of you do, you know? It's a shitty feeling. Am I a Russian prop? What, what does that mean? <laughs> Gray, are you a Russian prop? Um, what does that mean? You sound like an idiot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. It's good to vote for who you think will represents what you want. You know, like what you believe in. You know, so you could have somebody. Mike Pence isn't somebody I would be into voting for, for example. He'd be somebody, if he was voting, uh, running against Biden, I'd vote for him because he would be the better of the two options. But I don't really like him or his way of thinking or that he's too, he's a little too religious kind of, you know, trying to in, put that into everyday life. And he's just, I don't know, I don't like him. See, so he's somebody I wouldn't vote for because I don't, I don't believe in him or what he stands for. Ah, oh, jeez, Miranda. Oh, God. Here we go. See you later. Go do something else. All right. Thank you. Miranda is a supporter of what just went on in Israel. <whistles> wow. Let's see. Hearings. That's amazing to me. Anyways, you guys, I'm going to get going. I'm going to try to... 
come back maybe like uh, maybe at 10 o'clock my time and maybe we'll try to do what we did last night and get a hold of some Israelis and see if they want to call in what do you guys think of that Alright, so thank you to uh, Brown Eyed Girl 714 ZCS. And by the way, it isn't a coincidence that there are two big wars going on right now and the person who's the President of the United States. The weakness shown is now reaping its rewards. It's, it's horrible. Alright, Circa then, uh, Danielle, Joel Sane. Uh, Marion Olson, uh, George Leonard, Miss Fancy, Brutally Honest, Tamara's Favorites, Jim Lawn, Ally79, Wendy Johnson, Just Junie, uh, Calamity Colleen, Eugenie, Georgina Stoliker, Charlotte Denny, Amber Maiden, Callie Sandy RN, Norm Scanlon, Paulette Leonard, Sonia, Joel Sane, Tyler uh, Gensel, Tracy B, and living it as in living the dream. All right, you guys, we will see you later. And I like all of you. doesn't matter what your political beliefs are. Okay? Just remember that, though, because, man, <laughs> when the... The last president was in office, Trump. I almost have to whisper it because I don't want to. You guys were merciful. I mean, just literally had no mercy every single day. So everything that he said, doesn't matter what he, how he said it, what he said was turned and twisted and trashed. Yes, he did say some stuff that was kind of dumb. But my God, it was. So just remember that, okay? Everyone can play the game. I'm actually literally telling you what I think, though. Just like you were doing. So it's okay, right? Yeah. Alright, so thanks everybody. We'll see you guys later. And, as I always say, until next time, be safe out there. And a one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a five, and a six. Yeah, I've been doing this true crime thing for quite a while now. And during this whole time, I have not seen one person that is a... Yeah, I, I don't do... I'm doing politics a lot more the last couple days because of what's going on. Yeah, I mean, the last couple days I've done politics more just because of what's going on. But I try to avoid it a little bit, you know. But, yeah, I get, I get punished every time I talk about it. That's what sucks. And I'm always going to be a pup protector, fool deflector, interceptor. And I'm meaner than a specter with a vector On his pector with all respect, ya Just remember I've a temple fucking check, ya I have no agenda, I'm no pretender And I'll serve it to you straight without the blender And in the end, I'm gonna send ya On a mission to reveal the true offender Yeah, so I'll just Hey, Gray, right that was cool, cool man! Talking. That was a cool show, Gray! Uh, did you even watch it? No, but I, I would just imagine it was cool. <laughs> okay. All right. So you didn't really think it was. All right. All right. See you guys later. And hey, thanks to this account right at the buzzer getting us to, what did we get to? Oh, 285. All right. Yeah, that's me wrapping up. Yeah. All right. See you guys later. Be safe out there. <laughs>